Okay, my friends, this is it in a nutshell. This is Roger and with muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. And what does that mean? A muon neutrino is the black ball, and an electron neutrino was a white ball before hitting the Venturi. Then they exploded and created the muons, which is still the black ball. It doesn't change. You see that black ball? Exactly like it over here. And they surrounded the white and the white turned into the shower exactly like they said. Muon and electron showers are supposed to be the smallest particles that exist, and I essentially agree with that. And electron flood theory says this is all that does exist, and these in accumulations make up electrons, two of them together make an electron, the black and the white ball together, back, two to back and forth, which is basically two bar magnets, make up a photon, which is light, and 1839 electrons make up what we would consider a, fo a proton. And we forced them to concuss and accelerate and explode, and the black matter, the dark matter, the muon, this black ball does not change. It came in as a sa exactly the same as it went out. Here it is, here it is, same thing. It doesn't, and so dark matter, the, the description says it does not emit, which is nothing there, it's black. It doesn't absorb, it's not absorbing anything. It was attached to the white ball, didn't absorb anything. It doesn't reflect, it's not reflecting anything. There's nothing reflecting on it, it's just a black ball, dark matter. Now, one additional thing has to be added, it does not compress. That is the key. That's why it wouldn't go through this Venturi. This is what puzzled me so much. The white goes through as a, a, a shower. Now I'll show you the energetic values of these, and you'll see the black ball has no energetic value whatsoever other than to grab a hold of the white ones. All right, I'm going to sum this up and make it ultra simple. Pulsed red laser. Accelerating pulsed red laser. There is a particle within that wave that is now exceeding the speed of light and concussing here. This is the particle. We saw that particle divide and the white created this shower and the black balls are run around and attached on the outside. I say the black cannot concuss and that is what forced the showers to fission here away from the black balls and fuse back together here. That is desktop enormous, unbelievable amounts of, ex of enormous excess energy with no additional input. We didn't have to add any heat, nothing. We just shined it through a specific exact Venturi. And if we did this again, we would increase its energetic value here by a thousand or, or um, 200 times, 207 times, they say. And at that point, we should be able to harvest those electrons which have divided away from the dark matter and are nothing but raw nuclear energy. That is fission and fusion. That's what the Holy Grail is, cold fission and fusion from light, not from heavy plutonium, uranium, all that nasty stuff. We're using light. Light breaks and comes right back together. This happens all the time. But it doesn't happen, you know, they, they can't see it happen. Very rare that they see it, but it does happen. So it's not like, you know, you, you wouldn't put your face in that, I don't think. It might cause you some problems. I'd like to see what the radiation is. And stuff. I have a, um, I don't do the experiments here. Rod does them. But we should do some, uh, try a little Geiger counter there, because Rod says every now and then he can hear it sizzling, you know, when he tunes that Venturi in certain ways. Very, very simple device, but it's got to be tuned exactly precise. We can see the Higgs fields, we can see the particles, we can see the separation, we can see exactly what CERN and all of the big boys want to see. And here is the absolute, no question whatsoever, that it is compression and non-compression. There's the particle, all right? There's the photon, just as it concusses. You see the black one? That's it, nothing. You see the black one? Nothing. You see this one? This one's starting to glow because it is being concussed by these. So it is compressible 
as you can see, it's smaller here, one of them, and this is puffier here. And that's glowing because it's concussing. These are just sitting around waiting to do nothing. Same thing here, it's just waiting in there. It's moving this way, so the redness is trailing off of the back. Here, it's pushing through the redness, but it's not pushing hard. It's just, it's doing the same thing it would if it was over here. And then, you know, this is the particle. That's all there is to it. And the green is identical. So, we understand, well, I understand exactly what's going on here. And, uh, whoops. Hold on one second. The green is right here. You see, same, same particle. And this is just before it explodes. Now, we can see these particles, and sometimes they don't explode. And that's called the 2P2H particles. 2Ps is the particle size, and 2Hs are the whole size. And they know about this for quite some time, but they can't recreate it. They did it by accident, and nobody's followed up on it, basically. So, um... I think it's time to follow up on it. If we could get free energy, and like I said, my claim was that this this will not compress. The black balls are the muons. They are they call them muons, bosons, dark matter, and I'm saying in addition to not emitting, not absorbing, not reflecting, they do not compress, and that's why the. If you tune this exactly right, the white will go through, because we could see it's a fluffy little thing. This one is not. That's just like a brick. It's hitting there and it won't go. So I can't go. So I will go around, go around, just go around. Now, these here, I think, must be attaching to new black ones that are over here just waiting around. Because I don't think these things jumped around and got to them. But I, I, this is something we have to test. But these are the particles. And here they're four bangers. They're that little box of particles with the white and blacks. And here they start to separate because they just can't get through together. And then they bam, 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 bam. That's what happens because this is a pulsed red laser. And here it is right at the Venturi. So we're getting bam, 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 bam. And, you know, I mean real fast. And this... All you have to do is look at that, and if you can't see the increased energy value from here, which is basically nada, to here, which is basically lada, you should look again. Think of, think of it. Just think about it. When something explodes, what do you see? You see bright, brilliant white, and you saw that in the hydrogen, or you will see it. This is atomic vapor. This is basically lightning. This is a as you'll see, exact same thing that happens to hydrogen. Because hydrogen is not one gigantic proton. It's 1,839 electrons, and all of those electrons go out at once, and they show up just like these, because these are also electrons. And they are breaking down into that electron mass. And exact same thing as when hydrogen combusts. Okay, once again, as always, I got interrupted about five times. I don't know if I showed you this yet, but this is periodic videos and this is fabulous hydrogen explosions in slow motion this guy is very good and he's a good scientist you know he's got that uh, same Einstein looking hair but he's still a good scientist watch this now look at that now that's hydrogen if you look carefully, you can see that as the flame touches the balloon, the reaction goes really fast. The balloon lights up like an electric light bulb. Do you hear that? Don't forget that. Like an electric light bulb. Exactly like you're seeing at our Venturi. Exactly like an electric light bulb lighting up. Because we have fissioned, just like this is fissioning the nucleus of the hydrogens. So each hydrogen is, is not just one big ball. The way they talk about hydrogen, the core being like one big proton like that, and then one little tiny particle outside here. Well, it's not. When they hit this, otherwise, what, what explodes? These things didn't explode. They're just walking away from it? No. They're made just like this. And when you touch it and throw in an extra electron, it says, whoa, 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 we can't get stable like that. And then it throws its electrons out, and then everybody, watch, it'll go, poof, woof. That's what happens. It goes, poof, and then it's, it, then that sends out its secondary, and then everything goes. Here we go, watch it. These are the kind of things you have to watch really carefully and see things. Now watch. 
before it's lost its shape at all. And then it slowly spreads the, the now, right light. All right, now is when it's going to say, all right, throw all those other electrons out, and, th and then everybody starts to split their particles apart, and that's when you really get the explosion. Which is much brighter yeah. than with the hydrogen yeah. by itself, because the reaction's going faster, so the temperature goes up much higher. Yeah. And what's interesting is that the flame separates into two parts from... Right, because this one's pushing away, and this one's pushing away, because you started in the middle. And he does explain that. He understands that. But what they don't understand is that instead of being one big gigantic particle in that center, there's bazillions of these little tiny ones. And every one of them takes up a big region in space. And I can prove that, too, from outer space.